Hello friends. My name is Reverend Ruth Gallett. I'm the pastor of the Long Meadow Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Auburn, New Hampshire. And it is a joy to be with you here on YouTube as we begin this new year. It's a new year when we can begin again, when we can begin with hope, not only because of the arrival of the vaccines, but also because of the freely given, unfettered love with which we are welcomed by our God. During this time of stay-at-home recommendations, our church is continuing to worship together online every Sunday at 9.30 in order to protect those who are most vulnerable so that when we gather again together, we will all be there. However, I do understand that not everybody is able to or chooses to use that particular platform. And so I also come to you here every week on YouTube with the same message that I share on Sunday mornings. In addition, I post a, um, a message for our children of our church every Wednesday morning. And I invite you to join with me in those as well. If you are feeling blessed by this time of worship together and would like to support the ongoing ministries of the Longmeadow Congregational Church UCC in Auburn, we would be very grateful for your offering of thankfulness and an address is provided in the description down below where you can send your offering. I thank you for that and I invite you to join with me as we begin our time of worship. Throughout the months ahead, it is my desire to revisit the star words that we talked about in last week's message. I had sent to everybody in our congregation a postcard which included a word, which I called a star word, a word that reminds us of the star that led the Magi to the infant Jesus and hopefully will guide us as we go through the year to Jesus as well. If you did not receive a card, if you're not part of our congregation that gathers here in Auburn and would like to receive a word, simply put a message in the description, excuse me, in the um, comment section down below and I would be very happy to provide you with one of these star words. You can also watch up my um, video from last week to further understand them. I thought I'd start with the word that I randomly chose for myself and that is the word rejoice. Rejoice or its root word joy is something that is at the heart of our relationship with Jesus. Joy is something that goes beyond the happiness of the moment that is contingent upon things good happening in our lives. It is something deeper that comes from knowing that we are never alone, that Jesus is with us. And so this week, I, in thinking about Rejoice, I remembered Paul's letters in which he says, Rejoice in all things. Again, I say rejoice. He said that even in those dark times, there are things for which we can be thankful. Even when things are not going right, God is still with us. And so he calls upon us to remember to rejoice. And so in this week, I have so much for which to be thankful and so much in which to rejoice. And I rejoice that you're here with me this day. Again, I invite you, if you would like to pick your own word or to have a word given to you to think about this year, just put a, a comment down below and I'd be happy to respond. Let us begin our time together with prayer as we do all times. We spend a lot of time in worship, reading about and talking about God, but in prayer, we open ourselves up fully to God's presence. And I think that that's a good place to start, for by opening ourselves up, we invite God in. Will you be with me in a spirit of prayer? God, who watches over us, offering us light and hope, be with us this day as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism. 
Help us to remember your healing and cleansing and claiming love for us. Remind us again of the many ways in which you reach out to us every day. And may the image of the waters be for us an image of hope. Bring us closer to you, loving God. Embrace us again with your love. We open our hearts to you this day. Creator God, when everything first began, water became a symbol of refreshing, of washing away, of renewing. Through the waters of creation, you brought forth abundant life. We have gathered this day to remember Jesus' baptism, how your spirit proclaimed that he was your beloved son, in whom you were very well pleased. Our spirits resound with thankfulness for that morning. We rejoice also in the continued good news of the delivery of vaccines and pray that they are given to the most vulnerable and that as they are being done, that there will be no ever side effects and that the distribution may continue to move forward smoothly. We th give thanks for all the scientists who, around the world who work together to invent it, to those who are continuing in their research into other vaccines, and to also to all the workers who are manufacturing, transporting, and dispensing this life-giving medication. We thank you for the healing you have brought to countless thousands around the world and are continuing we thank you for the light that you bring to each and every one of us in these dark months, that you make your presence known. We hear your claiming Jesus as your beloved, and our spirits resound with that proclamation. In his baptism, Jesus' ministry was initiated. Help us to also dedicate our lives to you, to offer our best to you, to be of service to you, by serving your world. As we have lifted before you the names of people near and dear to us who need your healing touch and your tender mercies, we also lift ourselves up as people in need of your grace. We pray for all who are ill or who are awaiting test results. We pray for those who labor on the front lines of this pandemic, seeking a cure and caring for those who are ill or who are afraid. We also pause to remember our sister church in Chipenge, Zimbabwe, and we pray for all of our brothers and sisters there that they too may feel your presence and that they may know that they are in our hearts and our prayers. We pray for every family, every individual, both those who are joining us in worship this day and those who are beyond our circle that they may know that they are absolutely within your circle, that they may feel your abiding presence in whatever circumstance they may find themselves. Help us to remember that whenever we gather and however we gather, you are there in our midst. Lord, in our world there is war and oppression, hunger and alienation and we have not been good stewards of the world or loving to all of our sisters and brothers. And so in this time, we ask you to heal us and to heal this world by speaking the call you would have us hear as we lift our hearts to you now in silence. Renew us with your life-giving waters, we pray, and reaffirm our baptisms as your children. Let us go forth to be people of peace and mercy, for we ask this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture comes to us from the Gospel of Mark, from the very first chapter of Mark, and some of the first verses. We are reading Mark 1, verses 4 
to 11. That is Mark 1, verses 4 to 11, and I'm reading you to you from the New Revised Standard Version. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my beloved son. With you, I am well pleased. This is the word of God. Having spent time during Advent and Christmas tide with the beautiful narratives of the Nativity and the Gospels of Luke and Matthew, as well as the gloriously bold spirituality of the Gospel of John, it's a bit startling to note that Mark's Gospel begins not with the story of Jesus' birth, but zooms right to the moment of his baptism by John. It's a hallmark of Mark's gospel to not waste any words or time, but to get right to the point. The pace of Mark's texts is, <clears throat> excuse me, is incredibly quick with very little actual dialogue and phrases like immediately or right after that showing up 27 times in the first 11 chapters. And sometimes it leaves me longing for a slower pace and perhaps more poetic phrasing. But not this time. This time, with this story, I'm very content. In fact, I am filled with joy to be presented right in the first chapter with God's welcome, with the word beloved. Because I think we all need to begin there. Hearing Jesus called the beloved, with whom God was already pleased, and even more deeply, to understand that God said this before Jesus had begun his earthly ministry before he preached a single sermon, before he healed a single afflicted person, taught a single word, performed a single miracle, before all of the wondrous works to come, God called Jesus beloved. And I think that we also need to hear those words as spoken to each and every one of us. In our tradition, we practice both believer's baptism and infant baptism. I am always profoundly moved to participate in a believer's baptism in which an adult who is capable of claiming the name Christian and entering onto the path of discipleship up by their own choice makes that promise. However, there is something different but equally moving for me about participating and witnessing an infant baptism. For it is in these moments completely that we can, can completely embrace that this love is given to us in grace. 
when we behold and welcome a small child, an infant who is completely incapable of having performed any acts of worship, never mind discipleship, receives the same welcome and the same words of unconditional love from God, being called beloved. In our tradition, we do not practice private baptisms, except, of course, in emergency situations. Because baptism is not just a private revelation and acceptance. It is also a community action that we all need to witness and to remember. For we must all come to an understanding of ourselves as beloved. And as we experience in Mark's gospel, I say that we must begin with the understanding of ourselves as beloved. Not perfect, not flawless, not fully equipped, but beloved. For if we do not understand ourselves as beloved, then we can never open ourselves to the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It is available and freely given to everyone who comes to God. And so we do not put any restrictions or requirements on baptism. We charge no fees. We put up no barriers to anyone seeking this encounter, just as we put up no barriers to participating in Holy Communion, because the last time I checked, it was God's table. And in baptism, it is God's welcome. And who am I to ever stand in the way and to get in between God and anyone who seeks God. Here in Jesus' baptism, here was an act executed in the wilderness with God literally ripping apart the heavens to get to God's Son, to get to God's people whom God so dearly loved. And I would never want to fetter or domesticate such a passionate love as God showed that day and offers to each of us every single day. A wild, unearned, unconditional love. That is what God offers and that is where each of us begins our relationship with God. The great reformer Martin Luther struggled with depression all his life. It shows in his writings that he constantly felt himself unworthy of the love that God offered to him in Jesus Christ. And his way of confronting the, the weight of these feelings was to say to himself daily, I am baptized to remind himself that he was loved by God unconditionally. And so it was not about his worthiness, but about God's passionate seeking and love for Martin. And I invite you in your moments of doubt and feelings of unworthiness to repeat Martin's words, I am baptized, and to remind yourself that that means you are beloved. As a word of benediction today, I would like to close with a poem written by Jan Richardson that I printed many years ago and keep by my desk to read every day, but especially in the darker nights of my soul to remind me who I am and whose I am. I've included a reference link where you can find this poem in the description down below. Beginning with Beloved, a blessing. Begin here, Beloved. Is there any other word needs saying? Any other blessing could compare with this name, this knowing? Beloved? comes like a mercy to the ear that has never heard. It comes like a river to the body that has never seen such grace. Beloved, comes wholly to the heart aching to be new, 
comes healing to the soul, wanting to begin again. Beloved, keep saying it. And though it may sound strange at first, watch how it becomes part of you, how it becomes you, as if you could never have known yourself anything else, as if you could ever have been any, as if you could have been other than this. Beloved, thank you for joining me here today, and I wish you all a good week as we continue in this new year together side by side, seeing each other and ourselves as God's beloved. Until we meet again, my friends, I bid you go in peace and return in joy. Have a good week. Bye-bye.